Hello, I'm Brian David Gilbert, and I'm a person who makes videos sometimes. Today, I will be answering 27 questions. Who is Brian David Gilbert? That person is me. I am one person who has three first names. Don't get confused, some people do. Some people call me David or just Gilbert, and I respond to all of them because I have no sense of self-worth. What is Brian David Gilbert doing now? That is a question I have received from my relatives multiple times, uh, and I have not really figured out the perfect answer to it. Uh, I'm making videos uh, for my own personal channel, and I'm writing a bunch of stuff on the outside. I also doing voice acting things. Basically, um, I'm a freelancer, and I'm trying my best to start saying that I'm self-employed as opposed to unemployed. Does Brian David Gilbert have a twin? Sadly, I do not actually have a twin. I am a single, again, entity. If if there was a real David Brian Gilbert out there, um, I'd be, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as surprised as I probably should be, you know? What is Brian David Gilbert's favorite nail polish color? I'm gonna grab it for you real quick. Um, just give me two seconds. Uh, my nail polishes are always within reach. So I have, uh, I got two nail polishes because I lied about saying that I only have one favorite one. Uh, one is called Terra Coppa, and it's um, this kind of nice, like, bronzy, shiny one. And then this other one is called Let's Get Digital, and it, it looks super blue, but it actually goes on very translucent and uh, sparkly. And it makes my nails uh, look like iridescent beetle shells, which is what I like to go for. <laughs> How tall is Brian David Gilbert? Um, I have said uh, I'm 5'9", five, 5'10 five, on a good day, but the truth is that I'm probably closer to like 5'8 and a half. And I know this because I, uh, when I was in high school, and this should be a surprise to no one, I was in chorus. And I, I went to Allstate Chorus once, and in order to like figure out the risers, they would ask everyone to write down um, their height on it, so that way they could make sure that everyone was in a, in a row with everyone who was the same height. And that's when I learned that all men lie about their height, because I uh, put down my actual height, which is five, eight and a half, and then I was put in a row where everyone was three or four inches shorter than me. And so I towered over all of the other guys in the first row who said that they were five, nine, five, ten, felt very very, very proud of myself and seemed very out of place for uh, that specific riser. Brian David Gilbert bed? Yes. V very much so, yes. Correct. Where did Brian David Gilbert learn to dance? Uh, I learned to dance nowhere professionally. My sister is a trained dancer and she taught me everything that I know that's um, somewhat okay. Uh, my older brother is not a professional dancer or trained in any way. And he taught me all of the cool dance moves that you can do uh, at weddings where like you pretend to have a heart attack and, and then somebody comes over and then pretends to do a defibrillator on you. And you go as you, as you like go across the floor and it's super, uh, it's a it's a crowd pleaser. Do that at the next wedding you go to uh, 14 years from now when the pandemic is over. What's my favorite dance move? Well, I already uh, admitted to the defibrillator, obviously, but that one you can only do once a year at most or else it gets overplayed. Um, a big fan of uh, here, I just realized that I'm wearing green pants, so this might be impossible to see. I'm just gonna blend into more, but I'm a big fan of this one where you go like this. It's a really, it's a really good one. I like that one a lot. Anything that really just involves a lot of large, big arm movements, I'm a big fan of. Are Brian David Gilbert and Patrick Gill related? We are not related. Our last names are different names, but my older brother is also named Patrick. Um, and that's mostly because there are only six names that white men have. And they are Brian David Gilbert, Patrick, Michael, and Tom. Dream character to portray. Whew. If they ever do a live action Zelda, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish for this to happen, but I would love to play Tingle. <laughs> but other than that, any villain, really, any villain, any villain or Tingle, and perhaps those are the same thing. White, wheat, or rye. I'm a big fan of wheat 
I'm a big fan of breads um, that got seeds in them. I like to have a little texture in there. White bread, if you can like squish the bread and turn it into like a, a, a Play-Doh-like substance, not good enough for me. How do I like my eggs? I'm a big proponent these days of soft boiled, like put, popping them in for seven minutes. And then as soon as seven minutes is over, you put them in an ice bath for one minute and then you crack them open. And then you put a little Cholula and some salt and pepper. Uh, and I eat that for breakfast most mornings um, cause it's super easy and it's delicious. Game to have the biggest impact on me. Whew. There are so many games. It feels like a cop out to say like Ocarina of Time, but that was like such an important game to me in my childhood and like growing up and watching my siblings play it and then me also playing it, but being too young and not being very good at playing games at that point. But that being said, I also think Celeste had maybe the biggest impact of my adult life. I would say Celeste was like, it hit right at the exact moment when I needed to play that game. Um, and I will never stop talking about Celeste, no matter how many times my friends are annoyed by it. Dream project. Whew. I mean, I flip between like wanting to go off the grid and open a pottery studio in Western Arkansas and never have to go onto the internet ever again. And like, writing for a TV show. So somewhere between those two things, I think would probably be my dream project. Morning routine. I wake up and um, I've started streaming uh, on Twitch while playing video games and uh, riding a bike because I have realized that I never will exercise if I am not doing something else at the same time to keep my mind off of it. I love to gamble. Don't you got something to say about that? And for some reason, playing a video game and also streaming and also riding a bike is just enough to keep my mind uh, confused at all moments that I'm not really aware of the fact that I'm exercising. And I'm also not really aware of the fact that I'm streaming and uh, playing video games. So it's a real big mess, um, but it's a great way to wake up and, and really get yourself started. Creative routine. Creative routine. Usually what happens is that I get um, really stressed out about not having a good idea. Uh, and then I say, no, Brian, just go and take a walk and don't think about anything and don't consider any ideas and just, you're just taking a walk. There's no point to it. Just get out of the house and be in the sunlight for a few seconds. Uh, and then usually somewhere on that walk, I go, oh, here's an idea of something I could do. That feeling when you bite into a pickle and it's not as crisp because it, it, the pickle is, it's a little squishy. And then I come back and I write it and then I don't do any work on it for four weeks. And then I uh, film it and edit it in two days in a blind fury. And um, that's that tends to be how it works these days. <laughs> How many suits do I own? Too many suits. For for being a self-employed individual now, too many suits. My like my dad had to wear a suit to go to work every day, and I was like, I I wanna have a job that doesn't require me to wear suits. And guess what, young Brian? You fing did it. You managed to get that job. It's called sitting in your apartment all day in uh sweatpants and having in your closet. One, two, three, four, five. I've got a bunch of other jackets. I have a tuxedo. How did I get a tuxedo? I have no memory of how I managed to procure a tuxedo. Am I good at darts? I would say that I am better than average, but I only say that because I'm able to hit the dartboard 19 out of 20 times. I'm not able to get specific parts of the dartboard yet, um, but I am able to hit the dartboard now uh, and not hit the drywall next to it, which I would say, again, is better than the average person who never plays darts ever. What kind of voice would this have? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, I don't even want to think too hard about this. 
I'm, I'm honestly, it's this voice that I'm doing right now is the problem is that I saw the face and it just naturally became this voice and I'm so sorry. Uh, biggest strengths. I, I'm really good at soft boiling eggs now. I think has now become my biggest. Uh, I, the problem is that I have no concept of like things that are useful in the real world anymore now that I've been at home for 11 months. So I, I think my biggest strength is definitely cooking a really good soft boiled egg and like um, I'm, I'm really good at making biscuits and gravy too. Those are my two biggest strengths. Those are the ones that I feel the most comfortable about. Those are the ones I mo feel most confident about on a daily basis that I would f be willing to brag about. So I'll say that those are my biggest strengths. <laughs> Weaknesses, uh, physical, uh, like illness wise, definitely weak also there. Um, really bad at first impressions. That's a thing I've noticed is that when I first meet people, I'm very quiet and I don't like to talk to them. And then uh, usually, hopefully if they're willing to give me a shot for like a month or two months, then they I, I somewhat come out of my shell and I become a little bit more friendly and uh, don't feel so self-conscious all the time. But first impressions, I am very bad at. <laughs> How do I work with a team? I was very fortunate at Polygon to work with really lovely people that I care a lot about. And uh, it helped me feel much more comfortable talking uh, about creative ideas with other people. Uh, I'm really bad at, at putting stuff down, but I'm really good at like bouncing ideas to the furthest extent they could possibly go. And then once we've gotten to that point, uh, backing it up into a position where like, oh, this is the actual good idea. So my job usually in a team team place is to throw as much clay onto uh, the pedestal as possible uh, and then hopefully someone else will be there to help hone it down into something that's that's worthwhile. I can never open a pottery uh, studio in western Arkansas if that's how I make my clay metaphors. Job experience. Um, well, I did not realize that this was a full job interview. Uh, I started my first job. Uh, technically, you know, I did like, you know, I mowed lawns for people and stuff, but that my like first actual job was working at a climbing gym uh, and running birthday parties and camps. And that was my first ever uh, paid job. And it was probably the best one I will ever have for the rest of my life. Um, and then uh, yeah, I worked uh, as a copy editor for a terrible, terrible company in um, Baltimore for a bit. And then I worked for Polygon. Um, and those are the important ones. How are my, how, how's my problem solving skills? How is my problem solving skills? Apparently not that good considering it took me a moment right there to, to switch between how are your problem solving skills and how is your problem solving skills? It really it gave me a major moment of, of uh, anxiety trying to figure out how I should read this question. Um, uh, pretty okay once I've calmed down. Why would I be the best candidate for this position? That's a great question. I I am a team player and I, you know, I care a lot about the company. Um, and I think if you hire me, I will be able to make, you know, the, the, the growth rates uh, and the synergy of the company are two things that I am really passionate about. Um, and if we can really focus in Q4 on the marketing team, I think we can see great turnaround and great click-through rates. Um, uh, and, and you know, I also have six suits, so I can, I, I, you know, have a different one for each day of the week. I work six days a week. Where do I see myself in five years? Oh. Well, if not in Western Arkansas, then hopefully somewhere equivalent or better. I think I, I'd love to be doing something similar to this or something bigger than this, where I can, you know, hopefully work with other people and make a big story that people connect with um, and people can be passionate about. 
do I have any questions for you? Uh, plenty. I w would like to know what type of images you're going to be putting on the green screen behind me. Um, that's a very important question I have. Uh, I would love to know um, if there's anything else I can I could do in this uh, question and answer session to make this any easier for you. Because you have a hell of an edit in front of you. Given, given the responses I've given you, you have quite a lot to go through. You can check me out uh, on my own personal YouTube channel. It's Brian David Gilbert. I have weird sketches and horrors, I guess. Uh, a whole lot of stuff happens over there and I can't um, be held responsible for it. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. I think that's probably enough. <laughs>